With a happy smile on her face, Gwyneth walked out of the bank building. I did it after all, I did it. I closed the loan. Any way you look at it, it deserves respect because I spent nine years of my life on it. The girl praised herself. My father's debts, my mother's medical treatment, the mortgage on the house. I still have a long way to go. It's going to take quite a few more years to sort it all out. Call your little brother. He may have had an accident. Mumbled a strange man with glasses and a mask. It seemed to the girl that he was not mentally healthy. Somehow he has a strange voice. Maybe he's sick? I won't pay attention to him, the girl thought and ran away. Running to work, Gwyneth quickly changed into her lab coat. She was ready to meet her first client. For nine years, she had been working as a masseuse in one of the massage parlors of the capital. Gwyneth was a good specialist, who at least once was in her hands, was sure to return again. The girl was characterized by great attention to customers and was extremely courteous. The weather is so beautiful today, and I have to stick around here taking care of other people, Hillary exclaimed. But you chose this profession yourself, so don't complain. In a calm, indifferent voice, Gwyneth remarked. Hillary, don't listen to her. She's being rude as usual. I am entirely on your side, as I too am short of free time. I really want to go to my friends right now, but I have to sit here, Brittany exclaimed. Gwyneth, how do you manage? How do you manage to work overtime all the time? Where do you get so much energy from? Asked Hillary, to which the girl answered her that one should work while she is young. That was the only way to provide for her old age. I'll never work as hard as you do, shouted Brittany. Gwyneth didn't say anything back to her. She grabbed two large mugs of coffee and headed to her office. Suddenly, someone called the girl's phone. Since her hands were full, she had to hold the phone with her shoulder. What are you saying? Had an accident? With surprise, the girl dropped one of her mugs. A startled Gwyneth burst into her brother's room. He was sitting on the bed, wearing a special cervical spine collar around his neck. Kevin, can you explain to me what happened? How are you feeling right now? The girl asked her brother. Kevin lowered his head and cried quietly. I stayed up all night to go through the scholarship competition. After a sleepless night, I felt like a sleepy fly. I wasn't going to go out for my shift as a courier, but I was talked into it, told the girl by her brother. It's okay, just don't cry. You know I already thought you were going after Dad, but luckily you got off easy. No matter what kind of car it was, we'll pay it all off. Gwyneth reassured her brother. But that was an expensive car. It cost a lot of money. Plus, the accident happened during work hours, so the insurance won't cover anything. Since I'm the one who hit the car, it's my fault. Through tears, Kevin said. Even if we're lucky, it's still going to cost money to repair. Gwyneth, what do we do now? Kevin looked at his sister with puppy dog eyes. The girl almost howled with fear and despair. For a second, she thought dying wasn't such a bad idea. We need to calm down. Panic won't do any good. What about that driver? Did he get hurt too? The girl asked. Kevin answered her that the driver felt fine. He got off with some minor scratches. He was in the hospital at the moment, dealing with some issues of his own. Okay, I'll meet him now and arrange everything. Don't worry, I'll be back soon, promised Gwyneth and left the room. There was no way they were going to have to pay for car repairs. They just wouldn't be able to afford it. Gwyneth and her brother Kevin were up to their eyeballs in debt. First, after their father died, there were debts left over from his father that needed to be paid off. Second, they had a sick mother. Third, they still hadn't paid off the mortgage. Gwyneth had worked hard for nine years, but had never been able to deal with the debts. Kevin is still a student, so I don't want to get him involved. My mom's already taken out a loan for the cafe, and she won't be approved for another one. So it's all on me again. Gwyneth thought dejectedly. Gwyneth, long time no see. I kept looking for you, but I couldn't find you. The girl heard a familiar male voice behind her. Turning around, she saw Carter Fern. I didn't expect to meet you like this, said Carter. He looked stunning as always.
Carter's words surprised the girl as she didn't expect him to be looking for her. What's going on? Why are you here? The girl asked, surprised. It had been ten years since their last meeting. All these years, Gwyneth had tried to forget what had happened between her and Carter. Some car was following me. Was it your brother by any chance? He didn't seem to recognize me. But that's not surprising, since the last time I saw him, he was still in elementary school. Anyway, your family hasn't changed at all, and neither have you. And what do you mean by that? Gwyneth became indignant. Suddenly, Carter laughed out loud. His behavior made the girl extremely angry. Gwyneth promised Carter that she would reimburse him for all the damages. Isn't that the only thing you owe me? Have you forgotten how you ran away with my money? Carter walked over to the girl and gently touched her face. Gwyneth looked at him angrily. As kind a man as he seemed, he actually had a terrible temper. Gwyneth hated him. Don't tell me you've forgotten that incident. I hope you won't try to run away from me this time. It's worth noting that you hid well, but don't underestimate me. Admit it. You lost. Carter took the girl by the waist and drew her to him. Let me go. The girl screamed and pushed Carter away from her. I'll cover not only the cost of the repairs, but also the money I took then, so you don't have to worry. When the repair bill comes, I'll contact you. Here are my contacts. Carter gave the girl his card, then turned around and headed for the hospital exit. The annoyed girl clenched the business card in her fist. Damn, I got caught for money again. On a motion, I said I would give all the money, but where will I get it? At the moment, I already have a lot of debts to pay off, which is not enough earned money. Gwyneth thought doomfully. I was hoping I'd never see him again. His popularity on the internet is enough for me. I see articles about him all the time, describing him as an idol and an example to the youth. I can't even envy him because we live in completely different worlds. Carter Fern's name was often in the news headlines. He was a market leader among young entrepreneurs. Carter was not only the CEO of Next Game, but also a philanthropist. Carter was also frequently featured on all sorts of television programs. Journalists constantly interviewed him. The fact that his company, Next Game, was constantly growing and developing. This fact excited the public. He's so perfect that it's disgusting. He makes me feel pathetic and worthless all the time. How I'm tired of all this. Well, then why did fate brought me together with this man? Gwyneth thought to herself. He's the first and only one I've ever had a kiss with. And he's the first person in my entire life to humiliate me. I still can't believe it could be the same person. Carter and Gwyneth first met 16 years ago at a dinner their parents had invited them to. The girl was barely 12 years old then. Carter was 14. Do you happen to have an uncle? I think I've seen you somewhere before, exclaimed Gwyneth. Look at that childlike spontaneity in all its glory, said the adults and laughed out loud. Gwyneth and Carter's parents were in constant competition with each other for first and second place in the market in the same industry. They were longtime friends and neighbors, so the kids had to get along with each other. Carter and Gwyneth had a passion for basketball, so they often played together. They could be called good friends. Driven by the desire to compete, they were always trying to outdo each other. Each of their days was filled with joy. Also, Gwyneth and Carter went to the same school. They constantly goofed around and tried to spend every free minute together. But that all changed one summer when they entered high school. What a downpour. I'm soaked. Let's run for cover. Gwyneth shouted and rushed under the shed. It's pouring down like a bucket. It seems as if this rain will not end soon. It's a shame we had to stop our game. One more point and I would have beaten you for sure, said the girl, shivering from the cold. Carter put one arm around her and pulled her to him. The girl was extremely embarrassed. She was uncomfortable with her friend hugging her like that. This is why I hate summer, because of the sudden rains. The girl resented. Carter asked her what season she liked better. Probably winter. I love the snow, and I also love celebrating Christmas and New Year's Eve. Don't you? 
asked the girl. Me too, replied Carter. Suddenly, Carter took the girl's face and kissed her on the lips. Gwyneth, would you believe me if I told you that I like you? Carter asked. No, that's it. Stop thinking about it. Why am I thinking about that summer again? It's been years since that day, but as soon as I saw his face, the memories came flooding back to me, screamed the girl and threw the pillow on the floor. Suddenly, the phone rang. The caller's number was unknown. Yes, speak up. How much? Surprised, the girl asked into the receiver. Yes, you haven't heard. That's exactly how much you owe me. This amount includes not only the repair of my car, but also the money you stole from me back then. I suggest we discuss everything in more detail when we meet, said Carter into the phone. I'll drop you my address right now. Come to my place by 5 p.m. To avoid hearing the girl's indignant voice, Carter hung up the phone. She's succeeded again. She's got my attention. Well, I'm definitely not letting her go this time, mumbled Carter. Gwyneth arrived at the address given. Carter lived in a huge skyscraper. The girl knew that apartments here cost fabulous money. I won't humiliate myself in front of him. I'll settle this quickly and go home. The girl decided to herself. Carter opened the front door. The girl froze on the spot in surprise. His shirt was unbuttoned, showing off his handsome torso. Why are you frozen? Is something wrong? I walk like this all the time. I live alone, so I have nothing to be embarrassed about. Come on, come on in. You didn't come here just to stare at me, did you? Carter asked the girl. Yeah, but why don't you button up your shirt since you invited a girl over? Resented Gwyneth. Do you really think I'm going to eat you or something? What have you got in your head already? Carter asked in a sly voice. It's not like that. You're the one being ambiguous. The girl muttered and entered the apartment. This is quite a chorus. Sure, it was expected, but why so much space for one person? Thought the girl looking around her. I hate to admit it, but he's still handsome. His smarmy face has only gotten more mature. What are you thinking about right now? Is sitting in front of me making you think about other guys? Carter asked. I don't think I need to answer those questions. I came to you on business, so read this. Gwyneth handed Carter several scribbled pieces of paper. I take it you're going to pay off your debt in installments over four years? Carter clarified to the girl after he had familiarized himself with the papers. That's right, at 10% interest per month. I think that's a good offer, replied the girl. Do you really want to see me for another four years? Asked Carter. But it's a really good offer, isn't it? Not only will I pay you back all of what I owe you, but you'll also make a pretty decent profit, said the girl. She was really afraid that Carter would refuse her offer. I don't want to stretch this out for four years, said Carter in a firm voice. I'd love to pay it all off at once, but unfortunately my financial situation doesn't allow it, the girl admitted. That seems odd in the context of you embezzling my money, reminded the girl Carter. If I could go back ten years, I would immediately do so. I would have remedied that situation. But I also want to remind you that you yourself refused to take the money back, replied the girl. Yes, I didn't take that money because I hoped you wouldn't disappear from my life, exclaimed Carter and slapped his palm on the table. And what are you trying to tell me with that? Stop beating around the bush and be blunt. What do you want? asked Gwyneth. Ten years ago, you slapped me and ran away. Apologize for that. I will reduce your debt depending on the sincerity of your apology. Perhaps the amount owed will be reduced by half. It's up to you, said Carter to the girl. He hasn't changed a bit. Still the same pompous turkey. Carter is only interested in his pride, the girl thought to herself. Look, Gwyneth, you and your family are in this position because you don't know your place. And by the way, there's a rumor going around that you're dropping out of college. Why are you doing this? What's going to happen to you? Carter asked the girl when they were in high school. They say you're going to go work in a bar? Maybe I should be your sponsor? Unable to take the bullying from Carter, Gwyneth punched him in the face with her fist. Are you out of your mind? Why are you saying such nasty things to me? Sobbing tears asked Gwyneth. Well, can you apologize to me? I don't care, but this way you can pay off some of your debt, 
Carter insisted. Ten years ago, I would have loved to punch you again, but it's different now. It's not the time to defend your pride and honor, Gwyneth thought to herself wistfully. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I'm sorry for hitting you ten years ago. I'm sorry I disappeared then with your money. Gwyneth bowed low before Carter. And where did the Gwyneth I knew go? It's so boring watching you. No drive or fun. You can leave. I'll deduct half as promised. Carter told the girl in a gloating tone. Gwyneth picked up her bag and hurried to the front door. You've done well. All that's left is to deal with the rest of the debt, forgetting about your pride. After all, some of the debt I can already say I've paid off. There's not much left. I'll pay it all off and finally forget about him. The girl decided to herself. Gwyneth, wait! You forgot something. You forgot to say thank you to me. Is that harder for you than apologizing? Thank me for doing a favor for you. You bastard! shouted the girl and swung her bag, intending to hit Carter. The man bounced to the side, thus avoiding the blow. If you keep this up, I'll rip your tongue out, shouted the girl, grabbing Carter by the pecs. Carter pulled the girl's hands away from him and raised them above her head. Have you ever wondered why I go this far? Why I can't get over you? All these ten years, I haven't stopped thinking about you for a second. Answer me. How do I get you? Carter asked. Get me? What then? I have absolutely no idea what he's thinking right now. Why all this conversation? Surprised, Gwyneth thought. Don't provoke me, or you'll regret not shutting your mouth in time. In an annoyed voice, the girl exclaimed, Gwyneth, how would you react if I told you I liked you? Would you believe me? Carter gently took the girl by the chin. I would never date someone like you. The girl screamed and tears immediately spurted from her eyes. She pushed Carter away from her and walked out of his apartment. I didn't mean to bring her to tears. I just wanted to talk to her, mumbled Carter, covering his face with his hands. Lowering his eyes, the man saw Gwyneth's bag lying on the floor. What a scumbag he is, after all. He always didn't care about other people's feelings. You can't trust someone like him. I hate him so much. The girl thought on her way home. Suddenly, Gwyneth was called out by Carter. Turning around, the girl noticed her bag in his hands. He brought my bag? He could have just handed it over through someone. The girl thought to herself. Suddenly, a truck jumped out onto the road and ran straight at Carter. When Gwyneth opened her eyes, she saw that she was in a hospital room. Standing next to the girl was her worried mother. Why am I here? Wasn't Carter supposed to be in the hospital room? Gwyneth carefully raised herself up on the bed. Her head was just splitting with pain. Have you come to your senses? The doctors say the injury isn't dangerous. Do you know how worried we were about you? You didn't regain consciousness for a long time. You just got married, and now you're in such trouble. Gwyneth's mom said in a worried voice, What marriage? What are you talking about? Gwyneth was surprised. Have you forgotten about your husband? He'd be very upset to hear that, mumbled the woman. Suddenly, an agitated Carter burst into the room. Carter, what are you doing here? Asked Gwyneth. The girl began to feel like she was slowly going insane. Carter ran to Gwyneth and pulled her tightly against him. Thank God you're okay, whispered Carter. The girl tried to free herself from the man's tight embrace. She didn't understand what was going on. Why was he acting like they had a good relationship? What had happened while she was unconscious? Honey, how are you feeling? Are you feeling better? Carter asked the girl. So, why did he call me sweetie? What's going on? Why is he acting like that? Is he completely out of his mind? Frightened Gwyneth thought. It seems that due to the brain trauma from the car accident, Gwyneth has lost all of her memories for the past year. We call it retrograde amnesia, said the doctor, looking into the monitor. What are we supposed to do now? Can't my daughter get her memory back? Mrs. Winter became agitated. It may be a temporary phenomenon, so don't worry prematurely. Take note that over time, memory can come back in separate memories. There are cases where the memory is restored all at once. The doctor reassured the woman. You are lucky. Your daughter has only minor bruises, so you have nothing to worry about. Her injuries won't affect her daily life in any way. 
but we need to keep your daughter under observation for a while longer to make sure she's stable. Are you okay, sweetheart? Don't worry unnecessarily. You'll remember everything soon, Carter reassured his spouse. Doesn't make sense. It can't have been a whole year, right? And even if it did, how could I have married that scumbag? What happened in that year? The girl thought to herself. Carter took his spouse's hand. How could I marry you? It's not like me at all, screamed the girl and pulled her hand out. Gwyneth, it hurts me to hear you say that after all. Don't forget I'm your husband, and in case you forgot, we decided to get married because we love each other, replied Carter to the girl. Love each other? You must be out of your mind. What kind of love between us can we talk about? exclaimed the girl. In case you've forgotten, I'll remind you. Last year, you and I met again. Sometime later, we began to date, and so it came to marriage. And if you want, I'll show you pictures of us together. In a calm voice with a smile on his face, Carter said, Look, this is our wedding day. Even if you don't remember anything, it proves that I'm your husband. Carter pulled two pictures out of his wallet. The girl snatched the pictures out of Carter's hands and began to scrutinize them. All this year, you've loved me and I've loved you. And even more than you can imagine. You really don't remember me? Carter whispered in the girl's ear. Even if you don't remember everything, just love me again. We can relive all those moments over again. Why don't we? I love you. Carter rested his head on Gwyneth's shoulder. Are you sure you're feeling better now? You've only been in the hospital for two days. Please take care of yourself. I'm sure Carter will take care of you, but if there are any problems, call me right away. Asked her daughter, Mrs. Winter. You must be very tired. You've had a lot on your plate lately. Mrs. Winter continued to lament. She helped her daughter into the car. Carter, I realize you didn't expect what happened to Gwyneth. But please don't worry about her. She'll be fine soon. But still, is this the right thing to do? Wouldn't it be better if she stayed with us? Mrs. Winter asked her son-in-law. It's okay. She's finally recovered, so I should be there for her. Thanks for your concern, but you don't have to worry so much, replied Carter to the woman. As soon as Mrs. Winter and her son Kevin moved away from Carter, he immediately pulled out his phone and called someone. I have an urgent matter for you. Tell the others to move furniture and things from the second floor to my bedroom. It needs to be done very quickly, said Carter into the phone. Ugh, my head. I still can't believe what's happening. I couldn't marry this man. It doesn't make any sense. How can he love me after everything he's done? He's been cruel to me all these years. What's changed? Mumbled Gwyneth. It's not a long way, so you can take a nap if you want said Carter, getting into the car. I wonder what would have changed if I had accepted his feelings back then. I didn't give him an answer that day, and we pretended like nothing happened. Of course, it affected our friendship greatly, thought Gwyneth as she fell asleep. In an instant, Gwyneth's father's company was on the verge of closing. The only person who reached out to him was Mr. Fern, Carter's father. A short time later, Gwyneth's father's company was merged with Mr. Fern's. After a few months of working together, Mr. Fern fired Gwyneth's father. He reasoned that there were rumors going around the company that Gwyneth's father was taking bribes from suppliers. Gwyneth's father tried to prove to Mr. Fern that these were lies and slander, but he would not listen to him. Mr. Fern imposed a huge fine on Gwyneth's father. Since the man could not pay it, he was unjustly sentenced to imprisonment. After a time, his long-standing illness worsened and he died in prison. Often, walking down the corridors of the school, Gwyneth would hear gossip about herself. Classmates whispered that her family had gone bankrupt and she would now have to work in a bar. Many condemned the choice of such a profession. Old friends now shunned the girl and said nasty things about her. They condemned her for being poor. Gwyneth was hurt to hear the words of her classmates, but she always tried to keep herself in control and did not respond to their boorish behavior. One day, 
As Gwyneth was picking up the notebooks and textbooks that had been knocked out of her hands from the floor, Carter approached her. Move over, why are you sitting there? said Carter and walked around the girl squeamishly. That was the last straw for her. After Carter's words, she could no longer hold back her tears. The girl didn't understand why he was treating her like this. After all, he had spoken words of love not long ago. She always thought that even if everyone turned away from her, Carter would always be there to support her. Gwyneth hadn't expected him to turn out to be a traitor. He's the son of the man who caused my father's death. A coward who started pretending we didn't know each other after my family lost everything. I couldn't marry him. I'm sure something is clearly wrong here, thought Gwyneth watching the twinkling landscape outside the window. I couldn't marry my enemy. Then again, how did our families approve of our marriage? I don't know what I was thinking a year ago, but there's clearly some kind of loose end here. That's it, we're here. You can come out now, said Carter to the girl. Where are we? What is this place? Gwyneth asked in a surprised voice, looking out the window. This is our new home, you and I. You and I are newlyweds, Carter explained. You mean the two of us are going to live in this house now? exclaimed Gwyneth, entering the house. We moved into this house right after we got married. It would have been strange, and if we had lived apart... While this house may seem unfamiliar to you, but I think it's the perfect place for you to remember everything, replied Carter. But I was hoping you'd take me to my home, to my mother's, exclaimed Gwyneth. This whole situation was driving her white hot. Why, we have lived with you quite amicably. I told you we loved each other, reminded the girl Carter. And you don't have to worry. I won't force you to treat me the way you did before. I realize you don't remember anything, and I'm a stranger in your eyes. Actually, his excessive friendliness only confuses me more. The Carter I remember wasn't that kind of person, the girl thought to herself. You're embarrassed because you don't remember anything. Come on, I'll show you our room. Carter led the girl to a dark door at the end of the hallway. This is our bedroom. This is the bed you and I slept on, narrated Carter. We really slept together on this bed? I don't like that, frightened the girl thought. I'm hungry since I didn't have time to eat anything before we left. Let's go to the kitchen and eat. Carter took the girl's hand and led the way. When Gwyneth entered the kitchen, the table was already set. Don't keep it all to yourself. If you have questions, ask, Carter suggested over dinner. Yeah, I have a couple questions for you. One, what became of my debt, asked the girl. Can there be any debt between spouses? You don't owe me anything since we started dating, replied Carter. The girl didn't know whether to be happy about this news or saddened. Okay, second question then. How exactly did we start dating and when did we get married? Asked Gwyneth's next question. We became a couple last November and got married in March. We've been married for over six months. Since we love each other, we decided not to delay the wedding, replied Carter to the girl. I thought your parents wouldn't give their blessing for our marriage. Things are very strained between our families. They've been avoiding each other for the past few years, reminded the girl. You're right. They were against it at first, but I insisted. Since I refused to take over my father's company, I have no need to favor my family, narrated Carter. Besides, my younger brother is just career-driven, so they don't care about my personal life. I take it your family still hates me, am I right? Asked Gwyneth. And why do you care? Who cares what my family thinks? Don't pay any attention to it. I think all that matters is my love for you, Carter said in a gentle voice. And what room am I going to sleep in? Asked Gwyneth after dinner. Carter reminded the girl that he had already shown her their room together. She wouldn't be sleeping separately now, just because she had lost her memory, would she? We're married, and spouses are supposed to sleep in the same bed, said Carter, and kissed the girl's hand. No way! Yes, it's normal for spouses to sleep together, but you promised me that you wouldn't insist that I act like I did before, objected the girl. Yes, I was joking. There's a guest room next to our bedroom, so you can sleep there. I've already prepared it. You can go rest while I clean up. Call me if you need anything. Carter ruffled the hair on the girl's head. 
After showering and changing, Gwyneth fell onto the bed. I'm finally in bed. Of course, I don't remember her or this house. If I try to make sense of what happened now, my head will explode from overexertion. My life has changed dramatically. What awaits me tomorrow? When Gwyneth opened her eyes in the morning, she saw a smiling Carter in front of her. You're awake already? Do you want me to take a shower with you? Carter asked. The girl recoiled from him fearfully. Carter, are you out of your mind? Is it okay to sneak into a room where a girl is sleeping? Asked Gwyneth in an indignant voice. You've got something wrong. I'm not the one who snuck into your room. You're the one who snuck into mine. Shrugging his shoulders, Carter said. Looking around, the girl realized that she was not in the guest room, but in their joint room. But how had she ended up here? Most likely, when she had gotten up during the night to get a drink of water, she had accidentally walked into the wrong room. It was too dark in the house, so she mixed up the rooms. If you want to sleep in the same bed with me, you don't have to be embarrassed about it. You can lie next to me and I'll keep you warm. Carter offered. No thanks. I'd rather sleep in my room. Screamed the girl and scurried out of the room. Damn, what a shame. How am I supposed to face that creep after this? Why can't I erase it from my memory? In despair, Gwyneth clutched her head. So you've decided to take a break from work until you've fully recovered, clarified Hillary. Of course, it's terrible that you lost your memory, but I'm so happy to see that you're okay. I'm also happy that you haven't forgotten me. We've known each other for years. How could I forget you? By the way, I'm worried about something. Answer me. What was the relationship between me and my husband? Asked Gwyneth. You and your husband have just a wonderful relationship. It's impossible to see you two separately. It's very sweet. You once told me in tears that life had separated you, but you didn't give up. You said you've been friends with your husband since elementary school, replied Hillary. You even confessed to me that your husband was your first love. According to you, you met again purely by chance, and after that you started dating. And if that's not fate, what is? I couldn't love that scumbag, Gwyneth exclaimed and hit her forehead on the table with all her might. You know, it's scary to think what you're going through right now. You still don't remember anything, do you? And is it possible for a whole year to just be erased from your memory? Hillary said thoughtfully. Hey, you made it after all, said Jordan and stroked Gwyneth's head. Jordan, you're late. Can a doctor afford to be late? It's not like you keep your patients waiting, so why did we wait so long for you? Hillary was indignant. How are you, Gwyneth? Are you all right? You shouldn't be lying in that position. It might hurt you, said Jordan to the girl. Jordan touched the girl's forehead to check her temperature. Jordan, hands off married lady. Haven't they told you that you can't touch other people's wives? Hillary exclaimed and held out her spoon threateningly. All right, I'll never do that again. By the way, what were you two just talking about? Jordan inquired. We were just talking about Gwyneth's husband. She's been asking about him since she still doesn't remember anything. Anyway, when it comes to men, I know exactly how to behave. In a confident voice, Hillary said, It surprises me that Gwyneth agreed to marry her spouse after three months of dating. I remember being terribly worried, because she could have married an abuser or something. But luckily her spouse turned out to be kind and caring. Your husband always talks to you in a soft, kind voice. You're a sweet couple who coo like lovebirds all the time. Well now, things have gotten even more confusing in my head than they were before. I can't believe I had such a strong love affair with the son of the man who ruined my family. The realization of it makes me sick to my stomach. Sighing heavily, Gwyneth thought to herself, And why aren't you wearing a wedding ring? Doesn't it upset your husband? asked Hillary. That's right. I don't have a ring. And when I woke up in the hospital, I wasn't wearing a ring either. Why don't I want to wear it? Maybe we're not as great a couple as people around us think we are, the girl thought. But she said out loud that she probably lost the ring in the accident. When Carter pulled up to the bar, he saw a rather drunken, cheerful group of people. Hillary waved a man's hand, beckoning. Sorry we had to call you, but Gwyneth had a little too much to drink. 
said Hillary to the approaching Carter. That's okay, you did the right thing to call, replied Carter. He knew Gwyneth's close friends well. She often vacationed with them. It's been a while. I think this is the first time we've seen each other since you got married. Do I remember correctly? Jordan asked Carter. Apparently Gwyneth is having a hard time with her memory loss, so she had a little too much to drink. You don't have to scold her too much. Okay, I'll take care of her. You can give her to me. Carter held out his hand to pick up his spouse. He remembered that on their wedding day, Jordan had constantly looked at him with an angry glare. Setting Gwyneth in the car, Carter leaned back in his chair tiredly. Gwyneth, but how can you get so drunk? And how can one be so reckless? grumbled Carter. Carter carried the girl into her room and gently laid her on the bed. Afterward, the man covered his spouse with a blanket and kissed her forehead. He was sure that Gwyneth would be ashamed of her behavior tomorrow. As soon as the door closed behind Carter, Gwyneth immediately opened her eyes. What was that just now? I was wondering what would happen if I pretended to be drunk, but I think I walked into my own trap. Or maybe he really does love me. That's why he's being so nice to me, the girl thought to herself fearfully. Gwyneth, this situation is getting more fun every day. I didn't think you'd pretend to be drunk. Well, let's play a little. But blame yourself, you started it. Carter grinned maliciously. The next morning, Gwyneth carefully pretended to be suffering from a headache. Entering the kitchen, Gwyneth saw Carter. He was preparing breakfast in a bright pink apron. Noticing her spouse, Carter immediately went over to her and began asking her how she was feeling. What are you doing? The girl asked, surprised. I thought you might be hungover, so I made some sprouted bean soup. Let's have breakfast together, Carter suggested. No, I won't eat. Thanks for your concern. Gwyneth waved her hand, warding off the aroma of cooked beans. Don't be absurd. You need to eat. You're not going to walk around with an empty stomach all day, said Carter, and poured the soup onto plates. I suggest we eat breakfast together from now on. Before your memory loss, we used to eat breakfast and dinner together all the time. By the way, do you have plans this weekend? Maybe we could go to a movie with you. It's been a long time since we've been out. Look, do we have to go on a date? Gwyneth asked unhappily. Well, loving couples often go out together somewhere. With a cheerful smile on his face, Carter replied, Can I tell you honestly, I still can't believe we're married. I've never prioritized marriage in my life. And most importantly, I never wanted to marry you, Gwyneth confessed. Why? Carter asked briefly, which surprised the girl. Doesn't he really know why? Hell, I can't tell him straight to his face that I hate him. What am I supposed to say back? He's been good to me lately. I can't hurt him. Gwyneth pondered her answer. You see, you're just not my type. I like slightly different guys. Of course, I'm embarrassed to say that to my husband, but still, I really hope I didn't offend you with my words. Cautiously, the girl said, Don't think so. You're very handsome, and sometimes it embarrasses me. You know, some girls feel awkward when they're around such a handsome young man. Your good looks sometimes make me uneasy. You're too well-groomed for me. Then let's change your face. What do you want to change about your appearance? Just tell me what you want and we'll be sure to do it, said Carter to the girl. But honestly, I have absolutely no idea why you're complex about your looks. I've always thought you were beautiful. From the very first time we met, I've been crazy about your beauty. What a bastard, says such stupid things without a shadow of embarrassment. It went through the girl's mind. You know... I remember our first meeting well. That day you told me that it was as if you had seen me somewhere before. Was that really your way of trying to flirt with me? I'd like to point out that you've always been a naughty girl, Carter went on to say. What are you talking about? I just said you reminded me of someone, that's all. I thought you looked like a boy I saw on the playground. I never flirted with you, screamed the girl. Okay, why am I making excuses to you? That was in the past and long forgotten, and I don't want to bring up our past at all. Pulling herself together in a calm voice, Gwyneth said, Good, then we won't talk to you about it anymore. 
We'll just forget the past and start a new life. By the way, I'm going to be late at work today, so you don't have to wait up for me, warned Carter, getting up from the table. After Carter left for work, Gwyneth decided to explore the house. The girl hoped to find something that would help her remember the past year. On the dresser, the girl found a wedding picture. In this picture, she was very happy. Although, Carter told me to forget the past and start a new life. But I can never forget what he and his father did. There are too many negative memories accumulated that I can't get out of my head. In Carter's office, Gwyneth found her old photo album. Flipping through page after page, Gwyneth hoped to find something that would jog her memory. Leafing through the album, the girl noticed that there wasn't a single photo from the wedding. And here's a picture of us together from the Spartakiad. I wonder if our fate was decided then. At that time, I felt comfortable around him. I remember that was the year I dropped out of high school. I was cruelly bullied at school, and all the good things gradually disappeared from my life, becoming just scraps of memories. One day, Gwyneth was beaten to a pulp and left in a warehouse. Unexhausted cigarette butts started a fire. Realizing the danger, the girl began to call loudly for help. Fortunately, Gwyneth was heard by one of the students and rescued her. You will be temporarily plagued by a cough and throat discomfort. Everything else is not critical. Just remember to take your medicine and any discomfort will pass, said the doctor. And I would like to know who saved me. Is this student okay? asked Gwyneth. That student suffered severe burns on his back. He was recently discharged, but he asked not to tell anyone his name. He said he didn't want to accept thanks for saving him, narrated the doctor. If it wasn't for that student, I would have died right there. All the time I thought I wanted to die, but I lied to myself. I want to live, and I will live. I have to be resilient and fight hard for my right to live. Death is no longer an option for me, mumbled Gwyneth. After what happened in the warehouse, Gwyneth was no longer bullied. The students who had beaten her were transferred to another school. After that, Gwyneth's school life became more peaceful. One day, coming back from school, the girl ran into Carter. Carter walked up to the girl and hugged her tightly. If you have something to say to me, get away from me. You shouldn't touch me. The girl exclaimed and slapped Carter on the back with her fist. I have nothing to say to you, said Carter in a trembling voice. It seemed like he had been crying recently. Carter let go of the girl and then turned abruptly and walked away. A year later, Gwyneth's mom hurt her back and was admitted to the hospital. It required expensive treatment. For this reason, Gwyneth had to find a part-time job. She got a job in a small cafe cleaner. One day, returning from school, Gwyneth saw a joyful mother. The woman was clutching an envelope. It turned out that someone in Gwyneth's name transferred a large sum of money. This money will help us pay off our debts. You can also use it to continue your studies at medical school, Mrs. Winter exclaimed. Mom, how can you take money from strangers? What if they are crooks? Tell me honestly, who gave you that money? Screamed the girl, grabbing her mother by the shoulders. It was Carter, the woman admitted. How can you take money from him? Have you no respect for yourself at all? Have you forgotten who was responsible for your father's death? The girl wailed angrily. Don't talk to me now. I need to calm down a bit and come to my senses, or I'll say a lot of unnecessary things to you. Gwyneth put on her sneakers and sprinted out of the house. Facing Carter, Gwyneth handed him the check. Do you really like getting a bad reputation? Let's have a frank talk with you. Your family is in this situation because you don't know your place. Do you realize that? Carter asked the girl. There are rumors that you're going to drop out of college. What will happen to you if you go without an education? Have you really decided to work in a bar? If you want, I'll sponsor you. Enraged, the girl punched Carter in the face with her fist. You half-witted creep. You're the worst person I've ever met, screamed the girl. Yeah, it was an interesting time back then. I left college right after that day, and after that I got a job and moved to a different neighborhood, mumbled Gwyneth, flipping through the album to the end. Those memories still depress me to this day for some reason. Okay, I need to pull myself together and clean the apartment. 
I'd really like to forget the past and start a new life, but it's impossible. Carter was the beginning of everything in my life. He gave me my first kiss, my first love, and was the first person to humiliate me so much that I actually wanted to die. Even though none of that matters anymore, it still hurts me. Returning home that evening, Carter saw Gwyneth sitting on the couch. He was curious as to why the girl was awake at such a late hour. Weren't you expecting me home from work? Rejoiced Carter. There's something I want to tell you, and I don't want to put it off until morning. I've been thinking about it all day, about what happened to us a year ago. I don't remember falling in love with you, how we got married. In a sad voice, Gwyneth said, we have a strained relationship now. Right now, you're just another person to me that drives me wild. It's hard for me to be around you. This whole situation upsets me because I've almost been able to forget my most painful memories. But you've made me remember them again. And if I don't remember what happened over the past year, I feel like I'll be forever shackled to the past. I don't want that kind of life. I'm not sure if my memories will come back tomorrow or even a year from now. What if I don't remember something until five years later? How am I supposed to live all that time? I'm not sure I can love you again in all that time. It doesn't seem realistic to me. That's the reason I want a divorce. Server crashed on the first day of open beta testing, reported the head of development. If the problem isn't fixed before the official release, I will fire everyone. Do ten times the self-check and a hundred times the due diligence, ordered Carter. He rubbed his forehead tiredly. For the past few years of weeks, the problems in his life had been growing like a snowball. Director, I think we're rushing the release a bit, the head of the artist department piped up. Supervisor Shiverton, we have an approved schedule and you want to push back the release date? Fix the mistake in three days. Put your best foot forward, demanded Carter. But that's impossible. We can't fix the mistake in three days, exclaimed Supervisor Shiverton. I told you, we're on fire with deadlines. I can't give you more time than that, said Carter and walked out of the office. How I hate that bastard, hissed Supervisor Shiverton. But if you think about it that way, the principal is overworking too. I haven't seen him go home in the last three days, prompted Samantha. If I don't show up home in the next few days, my spouse will definitely leave me. Maybe our principal has wife problems too? Is that why the creep doesn't go home? Shiverton speculated. Are you finished, Supervisor Michael Shiverton? Asked the approaching Carter. If you have time to discuss the personal lives of others, I think you'll be done with your job in a couple days. How do you look at it? No, indeed. Three days is quite enough, Michael Shiverton said fearfully. Hurry up and get to work. We don't have much time, shouted Michael and the company employees involved in the discussion scurried out the door. I don't think I should come home just yet. It's for the best. I don't want to embarrass her too much, mumbled Carter. Gwyneth noticed that since their last conversation, Carter had been acting distant. He didn't return the girl's calls and was coming home very late. Gwyneth was uncomfortable with the situation, so she hardly ever left her room. Since Gwyneth was bored sitting at home all day long, she decided to go back to work. Calling the salon, the girl warned that she would be out from Monday of the following week. That same afternoon, Carter returned from work much earlier. He placed the food he had bought on the table and suggested that Gwyneth have dinner together. Why are you so early tonight? I thought you weren't coming as usual or you were going to be late for work, said Gwyneth over dinner. We finished the project earlier than expected. From this day forward, I won't be working as much as before. If our schedules coincide, we can have a quiet dinner together, replied Carter to the girl. Have you thought about what I said? I'm referring to the divorce. I don't understand why you're acting like you haven't heard anything, asked the girl. Gwyneth, I know this situation is bothering you, but I don't think getting attached to the past is a good idea. The more you cling to the past, the harder it is to move on. Carter told the girl in a calm voice. You think I'm not aware of that? I've thought it over. I can't keep being with you. I can't forget the pain you caused me. I remember everything in minute detail, exclaimed Gwyneth. Give me a chance to make it right, 
asked Carter. He promised he would be a good husband. But why do you say that? The Carter I know would never say such a thing. Covering her face with her hands, Gwyneth muttered. It was you who made me like that, Carter admitted. Let's not wear each other out. Don't worry about me for no reason. Get on with your work. I suggest we part on a good note, said the girl and rose from the table. As Gwyneth walked past Carter, he grabbed her hand. Give me one more chance to prove my love for you. Please give me some time, just a month. During that time, we'll socialize like normal people. Go on a date once a week. Occasionally hold hands and cuddle like other couples. But I don't want that. I have no objective reason to agree to it. I don't understand how I could marry you at all, the girl confessed. How about you try to love me after all, Carter suggested. Are you out of your mind? What kind of nonsense are you talking? Why on earth would I love you? Marveled the girl. If you won't agree to give me a chance, you won't get a divorce either. Looking intently into his spouse's eyes, Carter said, Don't play games with me. Don't think I'll buy your cheap provocations, exclaimed the girl. Let's do the following to you. You give me three months to make things right, and if things don't work out, I'll sign the divorce papers, Carter offered. You won't have to do anything. Just let me be there for you. Even if we end up splitting up, I don't want it to be a bad memory for you. I want to spend our last days happily. It doesn't seem like a provocation or a ploy. It seems like a desperate plea. I don't know how to respond to it. I'm not sure how I feel or what emotions I'm feeling right now. But one thing I know for sure, I will never love Carter. Gwyneth thought. Carter noticed the girl's pensively pursed lips, so he decided to take action. First, I suggest we go to a movie. I'll leave for work for a bit in the morning, and then I'll pick you up after lunch, okay? Carter asked with a smile. Gwyneth had been standing in front of the mirror for hours, not knowing what to wear. She was sure that Carter would look like a model anyway. If she didn't find the right clothes, she would look like a prince's servant. After lunch, Carter picked up the girl as promised. You look beautiful, Carter remarked. Yeah, let's go, replied the embarrassed girl. He's wearing more casual clothes today. It looks unusual, but even in it, he looks attractive. There wasn't a girl in high school who hadn't heard of him. He's always been very popular. Thought Gwyneth glanced at her husband surreptitiously. Why are you looking at me like that? You'll burn a hole in me with that look. Carter said suddenly, Don't make it up! No one is looking at you! The girl exclaimed angrily. Carter sadly noted to himself that the movie was a failure. It was not exciting at all. It was not interesting to watch. Glancing at Gwyneth, Carter saw that the girl was carefully watching what was happening on the screen. Gwyneth, you just puckered your lips. Are you worried about the characters? Asked Carter. The girl put her finger to her lips and hissed loudly, calling for silence. Carter touched the girl's hand with his own, but she didn't react in any way. Apparently going to the movies was a bad choice, Carter thought to himself. After the movie theater, Carter offered the girl to have dinner in a small, cozy restaurant. Carter, I wanted to ask you something. You're the eldest son. Why aren't you running your father's company? Isn't that the obvious path to success? To be honest, I didn't think you would ever ask me that. But I want to confess to you that at the moment my relationship with my father is strained. It's been strained since high school. We pretty much stopped talking when I got to college. And what happened between you two? Asked Gwyneth's next question. Carter thought for a few moments. The girl realized she wasn't going to wait for an answer at this point. Okay, since you don't want to answer that question, then tell me, were your parents at our wedding? Gwyneth was uncomfortable asking these questions, but she still wanted to know the truth. Despite their displeasure, they did come. My parents are the kind of people who care about the opinions of friends, relatives, and just people they know, narrated Carter. So how did you start your gaming company? The girl inquired. Laughing loudly, Carter told her that she was asking too many questions today. Since when had he become so interesting to her? If you don't want to, you don't have to answer. Gwyneth muttered, crossing her arms across her chest. I just loved playing games back when I was young. 
While in college, I created a game that got a lot of good reviews. After that, I decided to start my own business. It gradually expanded, reaching its current scale. No matter how many paths I try, I always try to go for my main goal. It may sound old-fashioned, but my motto in life is, patience and hard work will never fail. The same goes for you. I'll do whatever it takes to get you. You want to see the Iron Curtain fall and me surrender to you? asked Gwyneth. Carter's words startled her a little. After a hearty dinner, Gwyneth and Carter decided to take a walk around the city. I notice that you keep talking to me in a polite, detached tone. Why don't you call me affectionate words like you used to? Carter asked. Like I told you before, I'm not comfortable with you, and I don't like it when you push me around. I'm intimidated by your persistence, replied Gwyneth. But I won't stop trying until I'm part of your life. One day, when your heart opens up to me, please start calling me like you did before, asked Carter. By the way, I have something for you, a gift in honor of your return to me, said Carter, and reached into his pants pocket. Carter pulled out a small jewelry box from his pocket. Inside the box was a pendant on a silver chain. I'm not sure I can accept this, the girl exclaimed. She didn't want to give Carter false hopes, for she knew for a fact that she would be filing for divorce in three months. I want to confess to you that at one point I saw nothing but you. When you smiled, I was happy. From the moment we first met, I couldn't help but fall in love with you. You're as beautiful as ever. Carter pulled a chain out of the box and placed it around Gwyneth's neck. If you continue to feel uncomfortable, you'll return this pendant to me in three months. I'm off to work. Would you like to give me a morning kiss? Carter asked the girl. He's clinging to every opportunity to mess with me. His snide smile just screams it. Gwyneth guessed. Wait, let me fix your tie. The girl walked over to Carter and fixed his tie. She wanted to embarrass him, too. Gwyneth, you don't have to think I can't see right through you, whispered Carter in the girl's ear. Carter gave the girl a quick peck on the cheek. A blushing Gwyneth clutched her face. Gwyneth decided to explore the road to work. She knew that many stores in the capital were not open for more than two months. Most likely, a lot had changed in a year. The girl noticed a cafe that wasn't there before. She decided to go into it and buy herself a glass of coffee. Good afternoon, Miss Gwyneth. It's been a while since you visited us, said the waiter to the girl. Yeah, it's been a while, smiling, the girl replied. She didn't remember this waiter at all. Had she really used to frequent this cafe before? You want your usual Americano? asked the waiter. Damn, this guy remembers not only my name, but what I usually order. So much trouble because of my memory loss. Annoyed, the girl thought. Gwyneth, it's so good to see you, shouted Brittany and hugged the girl tightly. I heard you were in an accident. How are you feeling? Asked the dark-haired girl. Gwyneth realized that she didn't remember this girl either. It was most likely a new employee. The salon director came into the room and asked Gwyneth to come into her office. Are you sure you're going to be okay? Will you be able to hide your memory loss? Asked the director. Yes, don't worry, I'm sure there won't be any problems, replied the girl. I want to warn you that there has been a change in the staff. The dark-haired girl you saw in the lobby is called Janet. She was transferred to us from a neighboring branch. We also have a girl trainee named Unica, warned the director. Are you okay alive? Hillary asked Gwyneth. The girl noticed that her friend was having an extremely difficult first day at work. I bought us coffee at a cafe nearby. It opened about two months ago. I go in there every day for that guy. He has amazing looks. He owns that cafe, narrated Hillary. Does he really own the cafe? He looks very young, noted Gwyneth. He's actually older than us. They say he's in his 30s. His name is Seward. No matter how hard I try to get him to like me, he never pays any attention to me. So I've concluded that underneath the cute exterior is a tough man. Do you like him that much? What do you see in him? He's certainly handsome, but not to the point of losing your head over him, Gwyneth remarked. Look at her. Who would you have a crush on? What kind of guys are your type? Asked Hillary. I like guys with a cold stare. 
I think my type is quiet, intelligent, and cold-blooded men, replied Gwyneth. Even though you've lost your memory, your husband is still your type, noted Hillary. No, he isn't. Carter is absolutely nothing like the quiet, cold-blooded man, Gwyneth said in an annoyed voice. Stepping out of the parlor, Gwyneth stretched sweetly. I knew you'd be free by now. We close at 8 p.m. too, said Seward, who approached. That's great that we're both done working. All right, then. I'm off. I still have things to do, exclaimed Gwyneth and hurried away. She didn't feel like talking to a man she didn't remember. She was afraid he would realize she had lost her memory. Miss Gwyneth, wait! Your shoe buckle has come undone, shouted Seward. Seward squatted down and fastened the clasp on Gwyneth's shoes. Not only does he have an attractive appearance, but he also has a very kind heart, Gwyneth remarked to herself. Miss Gwyneth, can you please give me your phone number? Seward asked. Suddenly a car pulled up next to the parlor and Carter got out of it. Honey, are you done? I'm here to pick you up. Get in the car. Carter took the girl's hand. Are you her boyfriend? Seward asked. No, I'm her husband replied Carter. The men introduced themselves to each other and shook hands. Gwyneth felt guilty in front of Carter. Carter, didn't you tell me you were going to be busy at work? Asked Gwyneth to break the lingering silence. I did, but I came because I want to have dinner with you, replied Carter. So after dinner, you plan to go back to work again? Wondered the girl. Suddenly, Carter's cell phone began to play. A woman's name popped up on the screen. Why don't you answer it? Maybe there's something important there, said Gwyneth. She could see that Carter was in no hurry to answer the phone. Maybe he was embarrassed of her? It doesn't matter, said Carter and dropped the call. I'm going on a date with my wife and I don't want anyone bothering me. But who is this Amanda that called you? Gwyneth asked. Carter answered her that Amanda was a friend of his co-worker. Would your co-worker's friend be calling at this hour? Marveled Gwyneth. Why are you jealous of me? Carter asked with a smirk. No, I'm not jealous of you. I'm just curious. And by the way, that girl has the same name as a certain popular actress, replied Gwyneth. That's her, the actress Amanda Pataki, Carter admitted. You mean you just got a call from a popular actress that millions are pining for and you didn't answer her? Gwyneth was more surprised than ever. And as far as I'm concerned, you're much prettier than she is replied the girl's spouse. I know you're all on your last breath here, but you remember that today is the release day of our company's best game. There's only a little bit left. The Shiverton executive couldn't stop cheering on his team. Still, he's doing a good job of not giving up. Samantha praised the leader. Robin, by the way, did you hear that actress Amanda Pataki came to see our director tonight? If I remember correctly, you like her. When did she come? Why haven't I seen her? Robin asked, surprised. She came quite recently. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that today is release day. It seems to me that she's the one who's going to be in our advertising campaign. At the moment, she's probably in the director's office, replied Samantha. So why are you here? asked Carter to Amanda. I came to see you just to chat, replied Amanda. You think I have time for that? asked Carter in an annoyed voice. Amanda's presence was starting to annoy him. Am I not allowed to stop by your place just for fun anymore? You forget that I'm a model advertising your company's most popular game. By the way, I'm still your business partner. Do you remember that we started this company together? Sure. I gave up the company for a successful career as an actress, but still some respect can be shown to me. Amanda took umbrage. I heard recently that your spouse was in a car accident. Is that true? Don't believe everything you hear. My spouse is fine, replied Carter. I wonder if Carter will pick me up from work today or is he busy? Thought Gwyneth glanced at her phone. Just then a message from Carter came through. He wrote that he was busy so he wouldn't be able to pick her up. The girl decided to take the subway home. The subway was deserted. Suddenly some man in a mask in Panama followed the girl. Divorce Carter if you don't want to waste your life. Don't drag it out, the masked man advised. After giving the advice, the masked man walked away. What was that all about anyway? He seems to know me and Carter. He's about six feet tall. He's using a voice-altering device. 
and I think I've seen him somewhere before. Isn't this the man who asked me to call my brother a year ago? The last time I saw this man, Kevin was in a car accident that day. What does all this mean? Sorry I'm late, father, said Carter, entering the dining room. Still staying late at work? Mr. Fern asked his son in a disgruntled tone. I recently heard a rumor that you continue to support that girl. When will you finally come to your senses? By the way, Manager Keimers told me about your partial memory loss. Are you invading my privacy again? Carter got angry. Since you won't tell me anything, I have to do it this way. It's a forced measure, replied Mr. Fern. I gather from your reaction that you keep messing around with that girl. You should take care of yourself first and foremost and not burden yourself with work. Be patient if you cause trouble. You'll have a hard time dealing with the consequences later. Just play the good son. Carter soothed himself. Why are you only thinking about him? You actually have two sons. Who knows? Something unexpected might happen. You should pay attention to both sons, said Mrs. Fern to her spouse. By the way, Carter, when do you plan on having children? Wouldn't you be better off if we didn't have them? In order to properly hand over the right to run the company to Kai, there should be no room for arguments. Even though we're half-brothers, I continue to think of him as my own, replied Carter. Walking out of the bathroom, Carter ran into his half-brother Kai. Dear brother, I want to assure you that our family is doing just fine without you. The only problem we have is that you dishonor our family, but I turn a blind eye to that because I don't want to stir up a hornet's nest, said Kai, hugging Carter tightly. Suddenly, Kai pushed his brother away from him. I think you're the only one who understands the whole situation, but as long as you keep acting like this, my father is trying to convince a stubborn boy like me to be his heir, Carter said in a sarcastic tone. And where did you get that arrogance from? I heard that the Chinese business you were in has fallen through. If you get a post without even deserving it, then be kind and do your job normally. Do you need to talk about shame? Eldest brother, though handsome, but he can't live up to father's expectations. In fact, I think I would be more suitable for your wife. What do you think about that? Asked Kai. All you can give is a pretty face and a muscular body. Or is there something else I don't know about? Without saying a word, Carter punched his brother in the face with his fist. Unable to keep his balance, Kai fell on his back. You've been like this since you were a kid, and only using your fist could shut you up, said Carter. I only called you my brother for my mother's sake. In reality, you're a real bastard, shouted Kai angrily and punched his brother in the face with his fist as well. Carter grabbed his brother's head and hit him in the nose with his knee. Blood spurted from Kai's nose. One more word and you'll be paralyzed for life. I don't care at all who or what you are, but don't you dare touch Gwyneth. If you do anything like that again, don't beg me for mercy later. Carter warned. I still need to find out why the masked man is following me and who he really is. How does he know me and my family? Why did he advise me to get a divorce? thought Gwyneth, sitting in the dark living room. It didn't seem like a warning, more like a threat. Remembering the incident with Kevin, I don't think I can ignore what he said. But why does he still want me to get divorced? Maybe he has some kind of grudge against Carter? I don't know what I should do. All these thoughts are about to make my head explode, screamed Gwyneth and flopped down on the couch. No matter how much I think about it, I still don't understand anything. I guess I'd better talk to Carter about it and work it out together. But how do I talk about it? Maybe start by asking him if he has any enemies? Suddenly there was the sound of a door opening. What's wrong with your face? Did you get into a fight with someone? Or did you get punched? The girl exclaimed, noticing the bruises on her spouse's face. It's... Carter started to say and faltered. He didn't want to tell Gwyneth about his relationship with his family. Okay, you don't have to say anything. Come with me, said Gwyneth and dragged Carter to the couch. The girl pulled out a first aid kit and treated Carter's wounds. Carter drew his spouse to him and hugged her gently. Let's sit with you cuddled like this for at least a few minutes, Carter asked. In a normal situation, the girl would have pushed him away, but now she couldn't.
She guessed that Carter had an unpleasant encounter this evening, but he doesn't want to talk about it. As always, he keeps it all to himself. Gwyneth, can I kiss you? Carter asked. The girl froze in surprise. This was a turn of events she hadn't expected. Taking advantage of Gwyneth's confusion, Carter kissed her on the lips. Gwyneth had been trying to sleep for hours, but her efforts were in vain. She couldn't stop thinking about Carter. This is just kind of crazy. If this keeps going on and on, I'm going to lose my mind. I should have pushed him away then and just walked away. Why do I keep thinking about that kiss? muttered the girl. That's it. Forget about it. Nothing happened. We need to go to sleep because we have to work tomorrow. Gwyneth turned on her side and closed her eyes. The next morning, a sleep-deprived Gwyneth went to work. I still can't get what happened last night out of my head. I was originally going to talk to him about that strange man, but somehow what happened, happened, thought Gwyneth waiting for the elevator. Stepping into the elevator, Gwyneth pressed the first floor button. Suddenly, someone put their hand into the closing doors, preventing the elevator from leaving. When the doors opened again, the girl saw a strange masked man in front of her. The man silently stepped into the elevator. The elevator door slammed shut with a slight rumble. Looks like you decided to ignore my warning. I see you're coming to this house again. I really value your life, so I'm asking you to divorce Carter, said the masked man. The girl carefully pulled her cell phone out of her bag. She really hoped that she would be able to call emergency services. Who the hell are you to even say things like that to me? Gwyneth was indignant. She tried not to give the appearance that she was very scared. It absolutely doesn't matter who I am. What are you doing now? Are you seriously going to report me? The masked man noticed the girl's manipulation of the phone. As soon as the elevator doors opened, Gwyneth immediately jumped out. After running a little away from the elevator, the girl started dialing the emergency number. A masked man ran up to Gwyneth and snatched the phone out of her hands. What are you doing? Give me my phone! screamed the girl. Okay, Gwyneth, calm down and tell me what you're going to do now, asked the girl to the masked man. Gwyneth snatched her phone out of the man's hands and accidentally slapped him across the face. All of his disguise came off the man. Carter stood in front of the girl. Is that you? What are you doing? screamed the girl. Carter rushed down the stairs. What's he trying to do? Maybe he's lost his mind. Just a few days ago, I was determined to get a divorce, but he was acting like the most in love man in the world. And that stopped me. But what is he doing now? wondered the girl. He said he was against divorce, and now he's demanding it. And why is he hiding his identity? Does he really have a split personality? There's no other way I can explain it. Wait, I met him a year ago. I saw him wearing a mask on the street and then without it at the hospital. What's going on? Why all the cross-dressing? Why is he following me? Suddenly, the phone in the girl's hands began to play. It was Carter calling. Gwyneth picked up the phone. Carter told the girl in a calm voice that he would most likely be free early tonight, so they had a chance to have dinner together. What are you going to do now? Why are you messing with me? You just ran away and now you're pretending like nothing happened? You think I'm going to react calmly to this? And don't pretend you don't understand anything, screamed the girl into the phone. I'm sorry, but I really don't know what you're talking about right now, replied Carter. Gwyneth heard the noise of the road. He was probably driving in the car. I'm driving right now, so let's talk when we meet, okay? Carter asked. That can't be right. He just ran out of the driveway a minute ago. He wouldn't have had time in that time to get in his car and get on a busy road. Gwyneth thought in surprise. Are you all right there? Wait for me. I'll be there soon, Carter asked in an excited voice. The girl jumped out of the entryway and ran to find the masked man. She wasn't imagining it. Was it really Carter? Suddenly it started to rain lightly. At the same instant, the masked man approached the girl and opened an umbrella over her. First hide from the rain and then I'll explain everything to you, said the masked man. Gwyneth decided to hide under the bridge. I'm sorry I scared you. I really didn't mean to do that, said the strange man and took off his glasses. There was no doubt about it. It was Carter. The Carter you know, and I are the same person, but at the same time, I'm different. 
the man began to explain. I don't understand anything. Explain it properly, demanded Gwyneth. I'm Carter, but eight years later, said the man. Excuse me? Gwyneth didn't understand. Are you kidding me? You don't fool me that easily. I'd still believe you if you said you were his twin brother. Then who do you think I am? The man asked. Look at me closely and tell me how I'm different from the Carter you know. The man leaned over the girl so she could get a closer look at him. Those eyes and the shape of those lips. Anyone would say it's Carter. But I can smell cigarettes from him. And Carter never smoked. What's more, if you look closely, you can see a lot of wrinkles. That's what makes them different. Gwyneth thought to herself. So what's next? How can I believe this nonsense? I realize you're not the Carter I know. But how are you going to prove to me that you came from the future? Gwyneth asked resentfully. Yeah, that's hard to believe, said the man and rolled up the sleeve of his jacket. Look, this scar I got during an incident that will happen six months from now. The man showed Gwyneth his right arm. It was disfigured with a scar. Gwyneth recalled that Carter had no such scar at the moment. So, if the incident happens again, the Carter you know will have that scar. As for other things from the near future, unfortunately I can't tell you about that right now. Okay, let's assume you are indeed from the future. Then what do you want from me? Why are you following me? asked the girl. You asked good questions. I've come to ask you a favor. I know that you and I will divorce in eight years. Carter from the future started to speak, but the girl stopped him with her exclamation. Wait, what do you mean in eight years? I was planning on divorcing you in three months, screamed the girl. Let's drop that question. In the future, before and after the divorce, you and I will fight constantly and go through a lot of difficulties. For this reason, I think we should divorce you now so that our youth will not be wasted. I'm almost 40 now. I'm old and lonely. All I have left are regrets of a life mismanaged. That's why I spent a huge amount of money on a time machine to come back here. What kind of nonsense is that? Am I really supposed to believe this? What's been going on in my life lately? Why are the strange things following me? First the sudden memory loss, and now the time machine as well. It seemed to Gwyneth that just a little more, and she would definitely move her mind. You've already realized that the sooner you and I divorce, the better. If you stay with me, you're sure to ruin your life, said Carter. I've told you a bunch of times that I want a divorce, so stop talking to me like that, exclaimed Gwyneth in an indignant voice. Last, I was out of my mind, so I asked you to marry me. I almost died from the weight of living with you. I want to warn you that after eight years, you're going to gain a lot of weight eating up chronic stress. Carter began to narrate. Your hair will start to fall out profusely and your wrinkles will get deeper. To avoid that, you should divorce me. Don't ruin your life. But I want a divorce. You're the one who's against it. The girl shouted again. I've got an idea. Start doing all sorts of wild things and force me to file for divorce. Create extremely embarrassing situations so I'll be ashamed not only of you, but of myself, advised Carter from the future. The next day, Gwyneth decided to do whatever future Carter told her to do. She went out to breakfast unwashed and behaved disgustingly at the table. You're a little weird today, but I kind of like it. Let's take it as something new in our married life said Carter and laughed out loud. Damn, now what am I going to do next? The girl thought doomedly. If Carter reacts calmly to her ugly appearance, then it is necessary to proceed to more serious actions. You can't back down. A happy life is at stake. 